Remember a few months ago where I showcased some really impressive AI art using Dream Booth that can copy any subject or any art style and by using some really good fine-tuned models, you can generate some incredible art with just text. Well, four months later, people somehow made everything look so much better. From the extreme realism where the images just look like real people without the fake image glow that other AI will create, or illustrations that are so much more coherent and stylistic, making most of the ways that people suggested on how to identify AI art unusable, especially with these new techniques. I just want to put a disclaimer on this video that this does go down the uncanny valley of mine where there is gonna be even more art style copying and potential for deep fake images while everything is still improving over time. I am still figuring out how I feel about all these but I also think everyone else deserves to learn about this because this is a technological advance we inevitably have to face. To quote a tweet, AI will not replace you, a person using AI will. And this is soon going to be the world that we live in so maybe getting a better understanding of how everything works so we don't get left behind is pretty important too. Anyways, to get to this level of generated realism or illustration, as Rome wasn't built in a day, we have to go back and start from the ideas of Dream Booth and fine tune models which I mentioned in a previous video, check it out if you haven't. Since Dream Booth is good at learning literally anything with a very small amount of dataset, people started using Dream Booth to fine tune on an art style or an object, which makes fine tuning on the original Saber Diffusion model is kind of obsolete because it takes so much more images, training time, and computational cost to do something that is only slightly better. So some people in the community got really creative and started merging Dream Booth and other fine-tuned models together and discovered that it works surprisingly well. That pretty much started a whole new wave of merging models together to create something that will contain the best parts of the merged models. However, merging models was not a new concept. It existed pretty early on, but because it is much more complicated than training or fine tuning since you are just directly messing with the weights within the model architecture, people didn't really use it when Dream Booth just came out and made everything so easy. But as time passed, more trial and error research was able to be made so that good merges began to emerge around the middle of January and became popular ever since. There is a really good explanation of how different types of merging works, I'll link it down in the description. I'll just give a very simple explanation that classic merging works basically by adding or calculating the differences between the weights so that the combined model would uniformly share the key features that each of them has. While block merging is another type of merging which allows you to specify a particular layer of the model, so it gives you a lot more fine control on what features you combine. Block merging is extremely useful as some part of the layers is pretty much equivalent to an abstract feature such as hands. So merging a model that is good at generating hands with another that is not will pretty much guarantee their baby model will be able to generate good hand features. So now, since we can merge models together however we want, then there is no stopping from merging a merge model with another merge model to create a merge model that is used to merge with another model. So a mix is born. In some of the most popular mixes, they will include mix recipes, which would tell you how they have merged a variety of different models to get something that can generate details you would not be able to achieve with fine tuning. And there are mixes such as the orange mixes, which is one of the most popular illustration mix collections, which you can try out. But here comes Laura, a new approach released two months after Dream Booth, it was originally made with the purpose to reduce the storage and the time of fine-tuning large language models, but some people saw its potential and it was implemented into Sable Diffusion to create something even more phenomenal than Dream Booth. To give you an idea of how LoRa works, usually any fine tuning or dream booth would literally take your 7GB model and fine tune the entire 7GB model. But instead, LoRa inserts new layers into the architecture and uses those few layers to learn the goal of your fine tune. Functionally, it is very similar to textual inversion, so you train a trigger word with a subject for the AI to learn how it looks like. Then LoRa can regenerate the idea or the object with accuracy much better than textual inversion because it has a much deeper influence in the model. Even though its size is slightly larger, than textual inversion, it is still much smaller than a fine-tuned Dream Booth model. Laura has some very clever maths backing it up on why it works. So if you want to learn more about it, check out this Koi Boy video for a technical explanation and comparison with all the other methods. Things start to get weirder here though. Some big brain individuals somehow figured out how to merge Laura together with merged models. So you can merge Laura with a model and merge it again with another Laura and vice versa. So some really stylistic art began to pop out where it resembles 
example is nothing like your typical AI generated art. Most of the progress made in text generated art is either made by the weebs or by the horny people. In real life, text generated images are what impressed and worried me the most. If you remember any text to image results on a human, they all have this weird artificial glow or textures which you can instantly recognize it's AI generated. But with these mixes on top of Laura, people have found the perfect combo that will make the generation look extremely real, to the point that I had to double take when I first came across them. The mixes are based on some really sinister or unholy models, so I'll not be linking anything about it since it violates YouTube TOS. But the safe for work results are mind blowing. The only dead giveaways of it being AI generated are either the clothing patterns or the accessories. However, the face, the anatomy, the lighting, the shading, the reflection, it is scary how real all these look. People would probably just need to figure out a merge to improve these small details like the buttons, hands, or even the text, and it could fool people easily. Maybe the next job that's going to be replaced are probably the cosplayers and the Instagram stars, where the internet would be saturated with fake AI generated celebrities that appeal to your personal likings. And if you incorporate ControlNet, which I talked about in my previous video, you'll gain so much more control while generating with these AIs. The precision that you'll be able to generate is going to change the digital media landscape. It is also completely possible to fine tune these extreme realism models with Laura to a specific person, which in this case can be potentially as dangerous as deepfake, while being much more effortless to generate once a model of them exists. Comparing the amount of hours you need to deepfake a brand new video versus 6 minutes training of a Laura with your face and anyone that obtains the model will be able to generate anything with your face on it infinitely, the future is gonna be extremely worrying and terrifying for some. Thank you so much for watching, a big shout out to Andrew Las Chelias, Chris Ladu, Alex Marie's, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.